each little component of it was just meticulously done. And, you know, if you're in turbulence, she, she kind of lets you know that. And uh, if the skirt comes up over her head, you're pulling negative Gs. I made a wood break that I bent the top edge of it over, if you notice right here. So I have about 800 hours flying Jabiru aircraft. 3.3 liter, 3300, 120 horsepower rated. Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian and I am in Tullahoma, Tennessee. A bit hot, which is why I'm in a t-shirt today. Uh, but while I'm here, I bumped into Mark Phillips, owner of this 701, which is barely a 701 anymore, all the modifications he's done to it. So we're gonna give you a quick tour of Mark's airplane coming up right now. Thank you to our channel sponsors, Wix Aircraft Supply, Aviation Youth Publication, and Aero Adventure Amphibious Seaplanes. Mark, if you could start off telling us uh, why the 701. My firstborn airplane is an RV-6A I built about 12, 14 years ago. Uh, she's been a real good plane. I love the fast the efficiency of it. Uh, but after enjoying over a thousand hours in that plane, I decided to explore the other end of the spectrum. And this is about as far from that, from an RV as you can get. Uh, I had flown a 701 uh, a number of years ago and was really impressed with the airplane. And I'd also attended a seminar with Chris Heinz at Oshkosh earlier than that. I got home, did some research, pulled the trigger, and this is what happened. It, not exactly a 701, but it came in a box from Zenith, Mexico, Missouri, a complete 701 kit and as I started pulling parts out and putting them together I like to say I took some liberties. So, so what made you choose this this very classic theme Mark? Uh, about a year and a half into this project I've been playing with it and I had the, the basic wing that the wings done the, the empennage on it's uh, pretty much finished. I went to Oshkosh and walked walked into the classic airplane field and if you've ever been there you'll know what I'm talking about. You've got a lot of aircraft from the 20s, 30s and 40s but in particular the planes that were built before World War II, the classic Stensons and Wacos. If you go look at the way those airplanes were crafted, the detail put into the uh, each little component of it was just meticulously done and the style of it and the way they employed wood and aluminum no plastic it was just I was blown away and I said well they're more than I can handle pocketbook wise so but can I do something like that to this airplane to at least make me feel like I've got that flavor sure and this is generally what happens so airplanes of this type they always use a stick a control stick and a stick should be made of wood correct I bought, I bought a piece of bird's eye maple, a block of wood, and carved that stick out, put all the control wiring inside of it, and I had so much fun smelling that maple and working with it, I kind of got carried away. And if you look at the rest of the interior of the airplane, I'd like to direct your attention to the compass card holder up the top of the glare shield. You see, we have to have required documentation that the FAA requires and she's doing her job. She's also my attitude indicator. <laughs> she expresses my attitude. You know, if you're in turbulence, she, she kind of lets you know that. And uh, if the skirt comes up over her head, you're pulling negative Gs. So <laughs> it's, it's a good, useful instrument. Nice. And one of the other things required by the FAA, if you look up here, I've got a slip skid indicator that has the required FAA passenger warning over here that this aircraft does not comply with federal safety regulations for standard aircraft, which is required in all experimentals. Well, to balance this out and make it symmetrical, on this side it says EAA passenger welcome. In the pursuit of recreation and education, this aircraft celebrates aviation. Enjoy the ride. And these are stencils that are cut out and there's red velvet behind it. Uh, it's no paint. I don't like paint. <laughs> It's a nice detail. And then you've got some more of your uh, trophies, your trophy wall in your, pl yeah. in your airplane. Well, you have to, again, you're required to have your airworthiness certificate and uh, registration. Uh, the baggage placard is at the top. And then this is a family portrait of her big sister, the RV-6A I built many years ago. And uh, 
I also, some of the things I did to the control system, you notice that, that you don't have the big slots cut in the side of the skin. I noticed that. Okay, it actually, I brought the, the pivot point through is this rod right here, and it's activated like this, and mm -hmm. it goes through a little nylon bushing that keeps it, it's, it's pretty much water and airtight, so you don't have any, any real ventilation issues in the airplane. You close the doors in this thing, it's pretty airtight, and uh, you can keep the cabin heat in. I wanted to point out one detail here is just the lines of the metal work here that flow from the fuselage to the cowling. This is that kind of attention to detail. With the flush riveting. And the flush riveting, right. This is all pop rivet except for all the uh, load carrying areas or solid rivets and this has the flush rivets on the cowling. You reach inside and you grab hold of the pin, pull this pin out. And you pop the hood open. So you pull that out through the through the firewall. Through the firewall. On the inside, and you place the pin here through this hole and through that hole right there. You have a place to stow it. Well, you also if I it's oh, that's you your prop rod. Into that. Multi-purpose. And we're multitasking on the yeah. pin. Yeah. It's great in the hangar. If we got a breeze outside, it's a little scary. But so at this point, how old is this airplane? How long has it been flying? Uh, about a year and three months now. And you're looking at the firewall. It looks like you just finished it yesterday. I did build that firewall. <laughs> a lot of these components are still um, come with the, the Zenith kit, but you'll notice the steering, the steering system, the front, the nose wheel is completely different. Uh, I used a Jabiru trailing link. Oh, that's uh, from Jabiru. This is this is off of a standard Jabiru part, which okay. I've, I've flown about 800 hours in Jabiru's, and I've never broken one of these, so they must be okay. This is out of the Zenith kit, standard kit, okay. and I fabricated this steel uh, bracket that connects the two. So you've got a trailing link landing gear that I hope I never bend it. <laughs> right. That's the idea. It did add a little weight, um, but it's working out well. While you're in the engine compartment, notice that there you don't see a lot of wires tie wrapped together, hoses. I tried to go with a very monochromatic, just it's, it's a, all for looks. 3.3 liter, 3300, 120 horsepower rated. Okay. At 3300 RPMs. It's a direct drive engine, has a single carburetor. It's very, very simple. Um, and I've been very, very impressed with the performance of these and the reliability of them for uh, many years, so probably about 12, 13 years since I flew my first Shabaroo. Um, I have to say I'm never done building. Now whether it's going to be another airplane, my, my goal right now is to build another house because I live too close to Nashville, so I'm trying to get out in the country so I've got some space like this to park this thing on. Nice. Fresh air to the cabin. Big time. This is called multitasking. And you can taxi the airplane with uh, pretty much not run-ups. I like to turn it up, you know, close the doors before I do my run-ups. But the door is stable for taxiing in the summertime. That's great. And if you look at the bracket for the flapper on, it's been modified with a little rubber piece of hose on it. And that stabilizes the door to do that. It has a bracket right here that you can hook the seatbelt over when you get in and out of the airplane so you don't have all those scars all over the paint from the seatbelts banging against it. But I asked them if they could CNC cut me two new side skins for the plane that were about 30 millimeters taller on the top and on the bottom. And they didn't ask a lot of questions, but they took my money and sent me the parts. And uh, I made a wood break that I bent the top edge of it over. If you notice right here, the top, the edges are bent over underneath the top skin. That is only to do one thing, and that's to put the lingerie on that's normally on the outside of the fuselage, inside the fuselage, and hide it. Structurally, it's probably actually a little stronger because you've got this added 
piece of angle from the side skin going over, plus there's some spacers in here to compensate for some other issues. Sure. And that's done on the top and on the bottom, all the way down the length of the fuselage. Yeah. That's your anti-torque bracket? I wanted a double row ball bearing on both ends of this aileron, and, or elevator, and in the middle, just to make it more like Ambusa RV type control field. So right. I've put, I employed bearings on all of this, which leaves, means that I have to bolt into that bearing and into a nut plate that's inside the elevator. Well, how do you safety that? Well, I didn't want a piece of safety wire coming off the bolt going into here or something, so. So there's a spring spring in there, if I can catch that on camera. And then here to the tail spring, this goes a little bit of suspension to that. Yep, and it's got a pivot that's hidden and uh, good idea. nice and clean. And there's a lever right next to the fuel selector that if you activate it this way, these landing lights drop down with these doors on the, off the on the belly of the airplane, and they're extremely bright. You can also extend them lower to uh, if you want to like check out a, a runway that's not lit at night, make sure aren't any cows sleeping on it. Right. And then uh, you can get them up out of the way. You can handle all kinds of weird angles. Hey, if you're gonna fabricate a whole airplane, you, you can at least fabricate a tie down. Something to right? tie it down with, and then you just throw it the back, and uh, it doesn't it really weigh down much to nothing. Anything. Yeah, sure. So attaching those brake lines can be a headache. Well, I'll be happy to check out your next project and your cool. next build. Cool. Well, good talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you are new here, I invite you right now to subscribe. Hit the like button on this video and the little bell notification for future videos. If you're returning, thank you for continuing to support me and this channel and getting to reach more people to let them know about experimental, light sport, and ultralight aviation. I invite you right now to go over to wixaircraft.com and check out all the tools they have to be able to scratch build, kit build, or any aircraft that you're interested in. Check out wixaircraft.com for all kinds of tools and many different supplies for your aviation needs. I'll see you in the next episode.